Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Simple Questions for Success, How to Properly Evaluate Mobile Event App Providers. My name is Barbara Scafidio, and I'm the editor of Preview Magazine. I'll be the moderator of this webinar, which has been made possible by Crowd Compass by Cvent. Crowd Compass pre pre creates mobile event apps for conferences, trade shows, meetings, and events of all sizes that increase attendee engagement and produce a strong ROI. Their solution is an integrated component of Cvent's event management platform. Our speaker today, and we're delighted to have her back, is Brooke Gracie, Senior Mobile Events App Strategist for Crowd Compass by Cvent. In her role, she helps event organizers incorporate mobile, excuse me, into their planning and marketing strategies and enables the Crowd Compass sales and marketing teams to do the same. She's also the strategic mind behind Crowd Compass's trade show presence. Brooke is also known for her, her extensive event tech expertise and is often sought out as a subject matter in the mobile app industry. Before we begin the webinar, I have just a couple of housekeeping items. During the presentation, feel free to enter your questions in the question box. We'll gather them together and hold a Q&A at the end of the presentation. If your questions haven't been answered, we will be providing the speaker, Brooke, with all the questions so she can respond offline. Don't worry if you missed something. The webinar is being recorded and you, you'll receive a link via email to access the recording at your leisure. You'll also receive one credit hour towards your CMP from the Events Industry Council. For those of you who are, attend the entire presentation, and we certainly hope you will, you'll be eligible for a drawing for a $100 Amex gift card. I'll announce the winner at the end of the event. So sit back, get comfortable. The webinar begins now, and Brooke, you can take it away. Yeah, thank you so much. So hi, everybody, and welcome to this webinar where we're going to be discussing what questions that you should be asking when you're evaluating a mobile app provider. Again, my name is Brooke Gracie. I'm that senior mobile strategist here at Crowd Compass by Cvent. Um, for those of you that don't know, Crowd Compass is a mobile event app provider. So we support events of all sizes to provide both that content and that engagement that planners need at their events. Um, again, there is going to be a quick survey um, after this webinar. We just wanna gather some feedback um, about the content that you heard today. When you complete the survey, there you will get access to a new ebook. And what this does is goes into more detail about exactly what you're going to be hearing today. So if you're a planner or if you're an event marketer that supports events of really any size, this ebook is going to be a valuable tool to help you better understand how to find that mobile provider, you know, one that will meet your needs. And it will help not only you as the planner save time and money, but it's also going to help you increase engagement and to bring that value of the event back to your attendees. And as a bonus, if you fill out the survey, you're also going to get a gift card for a free cup of coffee. Um, as mentioned, we're gonna leave some time at the end for questions, so if you have any, please go ahead and put those in the chat box as I'm speaking, and we'll leave time at the end to answer them. So I wanna to start today's discussion by talking about the need for mobile at events. I'm also going to tell you about one of my customer case studies, Beachbody, and what their experience was when they were evaluating mobile providers. I do want to take time to dive um, deeper into specific areas to evaluate mobile providers. Because when you walk away from this webinar, I want you to understand all of the little nuances of a mobile event app and how and know all of the right questions to be asking. Because we know if you choose that wrong provider the first time, you could end up costing yourself time and money that you can't simply spare. You don't have enough time in the day as it is already, I'm sure. And you know, I have a bit of a unique point of view. Um, I've actually been with Crowd Compass since the startup days. Um, that was back when mobile was just being introduced to events. And because of that, I've had this opportunity to see a shift from mobile as a nice to have to a must have at events. 
it's very similar to what we see with mobile technology in general, right? Six or seven years ago, some people had mobile phones, but it was a nice to have. And today, everyone has a mobile phone. Um, I know I was visiting my mother in Iowa a while back and I peeked my head in to say good morning to her and she was sitting in bed, messaging, texting, <laughs> checking Facebook, you know, all there on her mobile device. And I just tell that story to say, you know, even our baby boomer audience is just as addicted to their mobile devices as your millennials are. In fact, they're on Facebook more than millennials and they use that mobile device to stay in touch with their family and with their friends, to keep track of their schedules. Um, and as my mom and even my grandma was excited to tell me, they're using their mobile to get around with Uber or Lyft. So I think the reason that we're seeing the shift in popularity of mobile event apps is because it allows you to provide both the content and the engagement that your attendees need to get the most out of that event experience. We know that they need to know their schedule. Um, they want to check out the speaker bios. They want a list of other attendees at the event. They want more information on those exhibitors. But then they want to engage with this content. They want session polling. They want live Q&A during the session. They want to share contact information with other attendees and easily follow them on social media. Those speakers, they want to know more about them. They want their bio and the opportunity for that year-round engagement through Twitter, for example. And those exhibitors, attendees want to learn more about them and have that collateral right there at their fingertips. But beyond just your attendees audience, you're, when you think about your exhibitors and your sponsors and your speakers, you know, they want a more personalized and high value experience because they have the mobile app as well. But the reality is that there are a ton of mobile app providers out there. There are more of them popping up every day. And let's be honest, every single one is promising features and functionality to increase engagement. You start to hear these buzzwords, you hear native apps, you hear personalized schedules, and while that all makes sense, um, why you wanna provide that experience to your audience, it becomes really hard to figure out which provider is going to be the best partner for you. So planners really need to be armed with those right questions to ask, to make sure that they're getting a provider that isn't gonna leave them hanging when they need them the most, or even worse, end up costing them money that they don't really have to spend. Now, many of you may have heard of Beachbody, um, but what many of you may not know is Beachbody hosts an annual, what they call Coach Summit. So this is the, an interactive event where it offers Beachbody coaches a chance to um, network with peers. They can learn from some industry experts. They can even work out with some of the famous Beachbody trainers. And this is a four day event and it has just a ton of attendees, thousands of them. They have lots of celebrity speakers and a lot of different events that are all happening simultaneously. So Beachbody knew that they needed an app. Um, so they found a basic provider that could help to manage the content and promise to be able to send push notifications. And Beachbody was really lucky because introducing mobile technology at the event, the attendees initially very much embraced it. But very soon thereafter, Beachbody team started to understand um, the limitations of the provider they chose. The content was taking way too long to load. The push notifications weren't going out as expected. Um, they tried to call support, but support wasn't available. And it just became very clear that just any old app provider wasn't going to do. They really needed a mobile app partner to help to deliver that amazing on-site experience. And because their events are so big, they needed a solution that would scale and they needed support and confidence that that product was going to be able to deliver when they needed it to right there during the event. They knew this event had to be amazing and they really just couldn't afford to have another technology breakdown. 
So Beachbody is set out on an exploration looking at providers. And this time they found Crowd Compass, which we were so excited about. Um, but they did this by looking at several providers and by asking the right questions and by touring the product ahead of time. Um, they found that they could save time by being able to easily update content themselves, that changes they made would be pushed live to the attendees' devices, that that ease of use from the content management system actually helped them to reduce the lead time. So now they had all this time to do other things. Um, they, had to, they didn't have to spend as much time actually building the app. Um, significantly less time than they were spending when they were printing materials. They were also given a support team. They had an account manager. They also had a project coordinator. And if neither of those were available, they had a 24-7 support line. Plus, you know, other support materials, interactive training, support guides, planner communities where they could talk about best practices. And because of this ease of use, they were able to then take other team members, easily train them up, and engage them in the build process. So now they had people they could lean on to help with content or other app build tasks. And because the app build was so seamless, they were now able to launch it even earlier, um, which is great because they started to use the app as a marketing there was more in-app engagement with the individual brands um, through some in-app sponsorship like banner ads and profiles, customized icons. Um, of course, push notifications were a huge help, not just because they worked at this time, but it meant that they could plan the events with ease of mind. They knew that they could plan some outdoor activities, but if the weather suddenly changed on them, they would could simply send a push notification and all their attendees would know that the location had changed. Um, plus, they knew how, the attendees knew how to get around what was a fairly large venue with interactive maps, you know, so they could see where workout sessions were located, they could meet with celebrity trainers, you know, it was a really fantastic experience for them. And the results were amazing. Um, you know, before I go through these, you know, keep in mind that Beachbody has a fairly large event, right? They had thousands of people attend, <clears throat> but they were able to save five months of lead time. I mean, just imagine if you had a project you normally spend seven months on and all of a sudden you get five of those months back. You know, that was huge for them, especially when they were looking at the ROI of the nap. Plus, they had huge cost savings. This is a number, blows my mind every time I look at it, but they're saving $38,000 per event. You know, just imagine what you can do with savings like that. So, you know, all of this to say that Leah and her team at Beachbody really learned the value of asking the right questions when it came to evaluating mobile event app providers. Um, I just, before I jump right into this, I just want a quick reminder because I see a couple coming in. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we'll leave um, some time at the end. So what I want to do now is really dig into what are the questions that you should be asking when you're talking to these mobile providers so that you don't have that unsatisfactory experience like Beachbody did the first time when they just picked any old provider. And when I start to look at these questions, I want to start with content. And when I talk about content, I'm talking about schedules. I'm talking about room changes. Um, we're thinking about exhibitor profiles, like even speaker headshots. And you guys know better than anyone that this information is changing all of the time. Um, right now, and actually most of my year, I spend time managing content for our annual event here at CVent. Um, I am in charge of getting session names finalized, you know, finding a room that's gonna fit everybody, and changing that room when too many people register, um, tracking down speakers to get headshots and bios, and then inevitably they have a new headshot right before the event, or they want to change their session description. You know, so all those little changes can really drive a planner crazy. 
And honestly, no wonder you have the fifth most stressful job, according to Forbes, right after firefighter. Now, mobile can help to ease those pains. So you should be able to easily upload your initial content and make those real-time changes as they're happening. So the first upload of content um, into the mobile event app content management system is often going to include a template. So you wanna ask that question, what does the template look like? And if the provider you're talking to doesn't have a content template you can use, I suggest moving on to the next option. I mean, because just imagine yourself trying to manually input 100 or 200 or even 1,000 sessions. No way, right? Time to look at the next provider. Now, ones that do have templates, should you should make sure they're also user-friendly. And ideally, you would combine the content in any way possible. You know, so for example, if you have one um, Excel template that you can use to include session names and descriptions and the room name of the session, but then also include the speaker name and the bio. So then with one simple upload, your app now has schedule details, speaker bios, and those two pieces of content are connected within the app. So it's creating an easy end user experience for your attendees. And then what happens when you realize that all the rooms have to change? I mean, do you wanna individually go into the content management system and update each session? No, absolutely not. So make sure you're asking that potential provider, can you re-upload the same template and make bulk updates? And if they say yes, you're going to end up saving yourself a lot of time. But even beyond those bulk changes, you want to be able to easily make small edits to maybe one or two sessions at a time. And probably most importantly, you want those changes to be reflected in that app in real time. So let's say the keynote session is starting 30 minutes late. You need to be able to update the start time in the app and make sure everyone sees that change. If your event app is sending those updates to your attendees every hour or even every 15 minutes, this is going to affect the end user experience. So ask the question, how quickly will app content update once I've made a change in the content management system? And ideally the answer is gonna be right away. And most often than not, that schedule is probably the most complicated part of an event. You have tracks, you have tags to help attendees understand which of that content is going to bring them the most value. And while sometimes attendees choose their sessions right there during registration, others prefer to peruse the agenda through the mobile app and build their agenda there. So ask the provider, can tracks and tags be used to filter sessions within the app? Um, can the attendee choose more than one at a time? Maybe I'm interested in sessions from more than one track, so to speak. So for example, if I'm an attendee and I'm interested in sessions related to mobile, but also social media, can I choose both topics and filter them at once? And that template that we were talking about earlier, can you identify those topic tags and can you identify those tracks in that spreadsheet to be uploaded all at once. And speaking of personalized schedules, how great would it be if an attendee chose the sessions they wanted to attend during registration, and when they downloaded the mobile event app, that schedule was pre-populated for them? I mean, make sure the provider you choose um, doesn't require attendees to reselect their sessions in the app because we all know that attendees don't remember what they registered for. And a recent study actually told us that organizing their schedule is the second most overwhelming part of an event experience for attendees. So infuse technology, the right technology, into your live event experience to help to ease that stressor for your attendees. All right, engagement. We hear it all the time, engagement. It's 
a key to successful live event experiences. Engagement with the content, um, engagement with each other through networking, engagement with the speakers and the, exhi um, the exhibitors, even engagement with the city itself. You know, every event has some kind of an engagement goal and that mobile event app can really help you to reach those goals. Providing, you can provide this engaging experience really like you've never been able to before. And, you know, I was, I was talking to um, Preview earlier and I do a lot of presentations and I do a lot of them live, you know, so I'm speaking to an audience. And I have to tell you, there is nothing worse than looking out into that audience and seeing attendees' eyes start to flutter. You know, they're trying not to fall asleep or you see this kind of wave of yawns during a keynote lunch. Um, and I always think to myself, you know, can just any mobile event app provider give you those engagement tools that will be most effective to help your attendees perk up? You know, I know this is gonna be a shock, but the answer is no. Many providers out there claim to increase engagement. But as planners, we really have to do our due diligence. We need to dig in um, even more to find those handful of providers that can do this better than anyone else. So like my mom and my Uber writing grandma, you know, all generations are using mobile technology as part of their everyday lives. When Edelman surveyed over a thousand attendees recently, um, they found a lot of valuable insights that we hadn't really seen before. They found out that 100% of millennials have smartphones when they go to events, they take those smartphones with them. 98% of Gen Xers have smartphones and a whopping 91% of baby boomers brought along their mobile devices. In fact, um, I find talking to baby boomer audiences, they are sick of us talking about them like they don't know what technology is. They're all using their mobile phones. So what does this tell us? It tells us that mobile technology has broken generational barriers. Um, but this doesn't mean that each engagement feature is going to resonate equally with each of these generations. Each you know, generation and each user is using mobile technology in their own and really unique way. So it's really, really important to ask the question, what engagement features are built into the app to help engage all generations? You know, push notifications are effective um, for maybe the baby boomer audience because they're used to seeing them in their everyday lives. But when you think about millennials, you know, they are more used to engaging on social media. So make sure your provider has plenty of in-app social integration features. Um, as a side note, I, I think there's a new generation out there, Xennials, so you can look that one up as well. Also very involved in using mo mobile technology and social. So asking these questions ahead of time is gonna make sure that you're reaching your audience and that will, it will pay off in the long run. Um, in fact, when you think about your event type and you think about how social media is integrated, you, you may actually realize that you want a more non-traditional social experience. You know, this could mean social sharing, but maybe it's only within the app. Or maybe you don't want attendees sharing out to social media at all. So when speaking to providers, make sure that there's that flexibility there so that all of your events, whether they're big or small, whether they're internal or external, can be supported on the same platform. And with some networking um, capabilities as well, flexibility is key, because when you think about all the ways that your attendees can connect, it starts to become clear that an in-app networking experience goes way beyond just sharing contact information. You know, first, make sure that attendees have control over their profile when they register all of that contact information. You know, their last name, their email address, their phone number, all of that should automatically populate in the app. And then the attendee should have the opportunity to add even more additional information. 
But beyond just then sharing that contact information, attendees want to engage and um, networking, start networking with each other in other ways. So ask your provider, what kind of attendee engagement is in the app and what kind of engagement can it help to facilitate? Um, maybe do they offer attendee to attendee messaging? You know, and, and ask them, how does that work? Ask them to show you. You know, some providers, again, will say, we have messaging, but it's just embedding email into the app, and they just call it messaging, when it honestly really isn't. Following one another on social with quick social buttons are going to help attendees stay in touch year round. You know, just think about if an attendee goes to your event and they meet some leaders in the industry and they're able to connect with them and then they're able to follow them on social media and months later they're still getting valuable content from those contacts. Really shows them the value of your event. And when you think of networking or attendee engagement, um, even taking notes or setting one-on-one -on -one appointments is valuable. But again, and I can't stress this enough, it isn't about just checking the box for the feature. Make sure you're asking the questions about the user design. You know, what does that user experience look like? Or you know, what happens when an attendee gets a message? Or what happens when they get an appointment request? And the same goes with session engagement tools. What engagement tools can they offer at a session level? And most importantly, what is that user experience? With features like polling and like live Q&A, um, make sure you're asking those tough questions about what that feature is going to do for your content management experience. Because, you know, we want to think about this from all different angles. We know that um, polling and live Q&A are going to bring a lot of value to the attendee experience, but really looking at what it's going to require from you as a planner is important as well. For example, maybe can speakers manage their own polls so that you don't have to do that? Um, and then ask, you know, what does that look like and is it user friendly? You know, just think about how much work that could take off your plate as a planner if speakers could start to manage their own engagement features. And really when we start thinking about engagement, naturally that conversation starts moving towards gamification. And I don't wanna go into too much detail here, um, but there are a few different types of gamers. Um, you have, and your audience is made up of all these types of gamers. You know, you have explorers, you have achievers, um, some would even consider themselves killers, you know? So the point is, that gamification really has to appeal to all kinds of players. And it's also important that gamification works with your event. It just it isn't a piece all on its own. Gamification should be helping you to reach your overall event goals. So if the provider you're talking to has gamification, ask the tough questions like, what is the user interface? How does this appeal to all types of attendees? What kind of adoption can you expect with this game? Or how have other customers used gamification to help reach their goals? The other huge piece of event engagement is the engagement between exhibitors and attendees, right? Um, these attendees are potential customers for your exhibitors. Your exhibitors are paying a lot of money to come here, and if they see the value by using technology, they're going to come back next year. You can maybe even charge them more money. Who knows, right? Um, so you really want to make sure that these exhibitors have that presence within the app. Something fun you can do is actually use gamification to connect attendees to exhibitors and connect them to sponsors. Um, beacon technology. I don't know if many of you have heard of beacons. Um, you, it's that little device. You can see it stuck to the wall there. It looks like a little colorful rock. And beacons are location-based messaging. So when someone walks by that beacon, a message can pop up in the app. And it can actually direct attendees to specific pages within the app. And even lead gathering. You know, how will this help your exhibitors walk away with more qualified leads? 
You know, that's a question that these providers should be able to easily answer for you. You know, how can they use that information to their advantage? And even asking what other kind of metrics are available to help exhibitors track their exposure, even outside of lead gathering. But no matter how great all of these features are, the live Q&A, the lead gathering, the networking, you know, no matter how many features you have available, like you heard from the Beachbody story, if these features don't work when you need them to, they become useless. Your attendees are very willing to download the app and to use it to access content, you know, like their schedule, they want to engage with one another, with networking, but the second that that app takes too long to load the content, or the moment that that app crashes or it isn't updating the content when it should, the second that happens, they ditch the app. So dare I say that usability and stability of the mobile event app you choose is the most important component of that mobile experience. But how can you be sure that the provider you choose is reliable? You know, of course they're gonna say they are, but how can you dig in to be confident? And the best answer I can give you is to ask. Ask them, what's your app uptime? You know, something that you may know is that each time a feature is developed, it's deployed. That's what we call it. We deploy it to the mobile platform. And during that time, it can make the app vulnerable for new bugs, you know, that could cause it to become unreliable. So I encourage you to ask the providers, what is your quality assurance process like for new features? And how often are those new features rolled out? Are they going to be automatically pushed? to your instance of the mobile app, or can you choose which of those new features are pushed or are available to you? Because reality is, is that new features are great. They're great for both you and for your attendees. So I don't want you to walk away being scared of short release cycles. You know, don't be alarmed if somebody says they're rolling out new features every week, but just be sure that each time a new feature is rolled out, it's tested properly. You know, we see a lot of fast growing mobile event app companies out there. They're trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, and they do that by pushing out new features and very quickly. But many times when you're looking at those smaller, you know, any old app provider, they don't have the staff and they don't have the support for those releases. And maybe they're not testing them well enough or they're not doing enough user research before that feature is even developed. So it really is up to you to ask those questions. You know, what kind of user research are they doing? How are they building out that feature roadmap? You know, are they asking planners like you to help inform their roadmap planning? And if so, how can you get more involved? Now experience, is something we know comes with time and unfortunately those new and those flashiest mobile event app providers they have some charm and they have some features but when it comes to the user experience or most importantly your experience you often can be left in the dust you know so the number one question that you can ask a potential provider is about support what kind of support will you have? Is it 24 seven by email or you wait four hours for a response? Or can you pick up a phone and get um, somebody on the phone for you? Sorry guys. Um, and are they gonna answer account specific questions? You know, because we all know that the day of your events when attendees are swarming in, this is always when those questions come up. Um, and that's when you need help and you need it right now. And you need an educated and you need a helpful person on the other end of that line available every hour of every day. Because events are not Monday through Friday, eight to five. There are weekends, there are nights, and some are even happening across the world. But even beyond that person you can call, that resource on the other end of the line, ask what other resources are at your fingertips. Are there help guides? Are there tutorials? 
Are there web-based communities? You know, I have to say when doing presentations like this, um, it's nice to sometimes have another planner on the phone with me because planners, they like to talk to other planners. And if you have a provider that gives you a community where they can do some knowledge sharing and talk about best practices, that is where you're gonna see a lot of value. Providers that have you put, um, that have put you know, the time and the effort and really thought about creating those kinds of resources for you are the kind of providers that are looking out for you as a planner. And spoiler alert, I know we already saw this slide, but lastly, you know, make sure your event app is intuitive and make sure it has those performance standards to ensure a very smooth execution of your onsite at your event. Because remember, you know, one of the reasons mobile has become so popular at events is, it become, it, is because it helps you impact your bottom line. So if done correctly, a mobile event app could save you thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours worth of time. We saw that with Beachbody. But similar to what Leah told us earlier, if you choose, or sorry, what Beachbody said earlier, if you choose the wrong provider, or you know, it doesn't have the stability you need, or it doesn't have an optimized user experience, or you don't have the support, a mobile event app can actually cost you time and money. So one thing you can do is to ask them how. Um, using that feature set and having access to those resources that they can provide, how you can leverage the app to help to see a positive ROI. Ask them what kind of features allow for sponsorship opportunities and what kind of metrics can you see to help track that successes. Because as a sponsor, if you have an in-app profile and let's say you also have a banner ad and that sponsor also has a sponsored session, after your event is over, they want to know how many people saw that branding, how many people attended that session. So make sure that the provider you're using can provide that information back to you. And just even asking the provider how their app can help to reduce costs. Um, including handouts in the app could save you a ton of money on printing. You know, so every single presentation, rather than printing them and putting them into a binder, or even spending the time to put them onto a flash drive, if you can include them in the app, it's gonna help your bottom line. Ask them if there's additional revenue opportunities beyond just sponsorship. And even have them tell you a story about a client who saw successes using sponsorship to increase revenue and what app features they use to reduce costs. And I'm telling you, if they know their stuff, they should not hesitate to provide you with one or two or even more examples right there on the spot. So we spent a lot of time today talking about the user experience, but what about your experience building the app? Because we know your mobile event app provider should be as invested in that app build experience as they are with the attendee user experience. There is nothing worse than trying to incorporate mobile into your live event strategy only to find it to be this nightmare experience, and especially if there's no one there to help you. So we talked about you know, asking those questions. How do you upload content? And show me, show me how I would do that. Um, how can I push live updates? And how quickly are those going to show up in the app? What kind of integrations are available to save me time and to save me sanity? You know, with integrations to your registration system or other you know, planning tools that you're using, it can automatically send the content over to the app so you're not duplicating any work by adding mobile to your, your live event strategy. And what about feedback? You know, how easily to get that feedback, how easy is it to get that app, um, that feedback through the app, you know, using the in-app surveys and have them show you what that experience would be like, not only for you to set up, but for the attendee to respond. And when you look at something like surveys, that is another great example of how you can save yourself 
time um, and, and really cut down on that ROI because if you're getting um, feedback through the mobile app and you're able to see that feedback right away and you're not spending hours you know, going through those paper surveys, it can be a huge help to you. And then of course, ask them who you would call if you had a question or where those help resources are that are ideally built right into the tool. So the last thing I'm gonna go over um, and is part of that mobile event app puzzle, so to speak, is security. So just think about all the information that you want to include in this app. You have your session information, you have your attendee profiles, your attendees are chatting with each other, they have social profiles. So it's really up to you to make sure that you aren't putting your attendee data at risk. But I get it. You know, when you aren't a quote unquote techie person, it's really hard to know the right questions to ask. So how about um, how many people are on your support team? You know, maybe that's an easy one. Or what about what is the average response time? And then start to ask about the event security. Can I add events that I don't want other attendees to see? And then it's important to know how that specific provider handles the data. How often is that data backed up? Where is it stored? Who has access to that, that information and that data? So my hope really is, you know, by arming you with all this information that you feel better prepared to have a conversation with potential mobile app providers, um, which will help you, of course, to develop an amazing event app for your next event. But remember, all of this information and more, even more of those specific questions to ask, are in the definitive guide, the simple questions for success. So again, if you fill out that survey, you'll have access to that new ebook. All right, I think it's time to start answering some questions. Thank you, Brooke. Uh, there were so many questions you um, you offered uh, our attendees that um, that they can use. This was really really valuable advice and the questions have been pouring in. I would like to ask um, or encourage the attendees to stay on the call for the Q&A. For those of you who stay for the entire presentation, you'll be eligible for the drawing for a $100 Amex gift card. And I will announce the winner at the end of the event. So I uh, have a few questions here um, from our audience. One is what um, should I be asking when vetting mobile providers for integrations with my event management system? Yeah, so we lightly touched on integrations um, and how that can help save you quite a bit of time. You know, so the best example of an integration would be, you know, maybe you're using one system for your a registration, you know, so attendees are registering, they're creating their profiles, you know, so they're giving you some contact information, you know, maybe even during that registration process, they're choosing the sessions that they want to attend. So it's really helpful for you to have an integration between that registration system and your mobile app so that those attendee profiles and those sessions and those personalized schedules will automatically come over. Some really key questions to be asking when you're looking at those integrations. Um, first is, how often does that integration run? So very similar to you know, how quickly does that content update in the mobile app, if you were to make a change in, to a session in the registration system, or if an attendee was registering last minute, how long would it take for that profile to show up in the mobile app and for the attendee to have access to their personalized schedule? Um, Another uh, key question to ask is what are those integration points? You know, so often we'll be very vague. You know, you can, a provider may say, yes, of course your speakers will, will come over the integration, but it's only the speaker name. You know, that's not very helpful for you as a planner. So asking, okay, when you say speakers integrate between my registration system and my mobile app, are you talking about the, what specific fields? You know, the speaker name, their profile photo, their contact information, um, that kind of thing. And the third, and I know this is a long-winded answer, but the third, um, I would say most important thing to ask is, 
um, is there a two-way integration option as well? So if somebody was, let's say, updating their profile in the app itself, maybe they initially entered their wrong phone number and they update it, is that going to go back to your registration system? So all of the systems that you're using across your platform have the most update and correct information. Okay, very helpful. Um, we keep hearing so much about engagement and um, what, what in-app features can help enhance networking beyond just the, the contact sharing? Yeah, so we went through a, a few of those, um, you know, contact sharing and just, you know, sharing that electronic business card, so to speak, um, is really important. But I don't think I can stress enough the importance of social um, as well. Oftentimes, we think kind of last minute about adding social to attendee profiles or letting them connect to their profiles to Twitter, for example. Um, but again, when we think about utilizing a live event experience and all the technology at that live event to create an ongoing experience for this attendee, um, things like allowing them to follow each other on social media is really important for doing that. Um, also, just thinking about the goal here, you know, networking isn't about just collecting as many business cards as you can, you know, for those attendees or even for your exhibitors, it's about spending quality time with potential leads or with, you know, people they really want to um, meet with. So allowing them to do that through the app, you know, through the one-on-one -on -one appointments or through in-app messaging, you know, creating those more intimate connections um, between attendees or attendees and exhibitors or attendees and sponsors um, and util utilizing the mobile app to do that is really important. Okay. I do see Gail is on the call. Hello, Gail. Um, and she and a couple of others had a question about pricing. Um, why are these products so expensive? Anywhere from twelve to $20,000. How do, <laughs> How do I sell? How um, do I sell this to my stakeholders? Very valid. Yeah, no, I I absolutely agree. Um, because a lot of times when you're first starting out, thinking about including mobile into your overall event strategy, it isn't a line item on your budget, right? It really does take you as the planner um, to uh, sell the value internally. And oftentimes there's a lot of pressure on the planner to make sure that the app goes off without a hitch, that it's a really flawless and engaging experience. Um, a lot of providers, you know, Crowd Compass uh, does this as well, um, provides a tiered um, pricing structure, you know, so it does look at the, um, look at some of the different elements of your event, like how many attendees you have. Um, we'll also have um, bulk pricing, so like if you have three or more events, you know, it might come down in cost per event. Um, but I really think, what we miss when we look at that, we, we look at the price tag and it's hard to think about what kind of costs it's actually offsetting. Um, so what I encourage planners to do is really sit down and think like, if I get a mobile app, how much printing am I going to be able to immediately eliminate? Um, and how much did that printing cost us? Um, and then think beyond that. Okay, now think about how that content is going to engage my attendees year round. You know, I could send them a push notification two months after the event is over and still, you know, have that engagement with them. Um, also time savings. You know, and I know Beachbody was like, okay, Brooke, you're, you're crazy. Of course, you're telling us about the person who saved five months lead time. But I will say, Almost every single, if not every single planner I have worked with has been able to save time both leading up to the event and actually at the event itself by using mobile technology. And that number, that hours number is hard to quantify, but if you can, um, it is really valuable and that's really interesting information for your C-suite, you know, for those people that you're trying to sell internally. Um, and again, I know long-winded answer, but um, my suggestion to you is first, if you're looking at mobile app providers and they, and you ask them that question, you know, hey, you're asking me to spend $12,000 on this mobile app. What can you do to help me sell this to my internal stakeholders? 
they should have a way to help you do that. Um, and most likely what they're gonna do is sit down and say, what can we save in costs, other costs that you have by using mobile? What can we save in time? And how can mobile help to reach your event goals and really just you know, kind of put it together an ROI calculation and send you with some resources you know, back to your stakeholders to have that conversation? Okay. Uh, you know, many of our, uh, probably most of our audience plans internationally, and I have a question from Eileen about, um, is this are mobile apps uh, um, as popular and, and used as much in, inter, in the international arena as in the U.S.? And I, I think I'd add to that: what are some, you know, what are some of the differences? Ah, great question. Um, I don't get this question a lot, which um, is interesting because mobile is used all over the world. Um, in fact, Crowd Compass, we actually have an office in London and we're doing a big event in London that I'm working on right now. You know, when you look at other markets, um, they're absolutely interested in using mobile technology as much as we are here in the States. Um, the, the question, if you're doing um, international events, you know, the questions that you really want to be asking providers is about um, being able to localize, you know, content. Um, I like, for example, you know, I'm working in the UK and the word localize, you know, is different, so it's spelled differently here than it would be there, you know, and so I need to be able to um, change the word schedule to agenda or checking your diary, you know, things like that. I need to be able to change that within the app. Um, so just asking, you know, how easy is it to localize content? Um, and maybe even asking them if they have examples of events that they've supported in the country where you're having an event as well. Um, that can be really helpful. But um, overall, overarching, um, the technology is being used all over the world. Okay. This is a more um, kind of granular um, process question. To what extent is the account manager involved once the app is purchased? Do they simply offer assistance? on the features, um, which is what you would expect, or are they able to provide specific insights and suggestions with regard to innovative ideas about how to use the tools during that specific event? In other words, in other words, do they have an understanding of the event, the goals, the what the audience looks like? Um, what I guess it's really, what is their role um, in trying, what, what can we expect? I mean, it's going to change with, it's going to be different for every provider that you're looking at. Um, and, you know, maybe that person that you're looking for, you know, really, because it sounds like what you're looking for is somebody that is a subject matter expert that has had lots of experience with um, other customers um, using mobile as part of their event strategy. And like you said, is has those tips and tricks and kind of best practices to share with, with you. Um, and, and really be invested in your success using mobile. Um, it may not be an account manager, but there should absolutely be that person that's part of your team that works at that um, provider. You know, at Crowd Compass, we have account managers who will support you and are very knowledgeable about the product. But if you're wanting to know specifically like how can I do X, Y, and Z, or how can I get some of those you know, insights, you're probably gonna go to your project coordinator, which is, another, which is another person that is assigned to you and your app and your project and is like your first point of contact. You know, they're the ones that are really um, helping you to reach those goals. And then if you have questions about you know, pricing or you have questions about your contract or renewing it, maybe that's when you would go to your account manager. So to answer your question, um, an account manager could be that person at, at some providers, but if you are finding um, one that's really gonna work with you, uh, make sure you're asking those questions. Like, is that account manager gonna be that person? And if not, who is that person going to be? Because it's gonna make a huge difference when it comes to seeing the success of a mobile and the adoption and, and having that mobile really impact your bottom line. Okay, I have a question from Matt. Um, what makes a map interactive? Can they be connected through something like Google Maps within an app to show an attendee where they are in relation to where they want to be? It sounds like 
because he's talking about GPS, um, getting around yeah. the venue. I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of maps that can be included. Um, it's a really good question to be asking providers um, exactly how quote unquote interactive maps work because that terminology can be used very loosely. Um, and there's a different different types. So um, you have what might be called like a geo map or an area map or a city map. You know, that would be something where it would show you where the venue is located, but could also show you different points of interest. You know, um, I talked earlier about engaging with content could even include engaging with the city itself. You know, I had a customer who had an event in New Orleans or New Orleans or whatever everybody wants to call it. Um, I'm from Iowa, so I call it New Orleans. Um, if you, uh, you know, if you're in that city, they of course wanted you to be part of the venue, but part of the draw of the event was all the cool stuff going around, going on around them. You know, so in the app, they had a map, showed you where the venue was, but then it also showed you where you could go to Mardi Gras World and it could give you, you know, turn by turn directions to get there. Other interactive maps could be like the venue itself. Where are all the session rooms located? You know, in those, um, I think most importantly, when somebody is looking at their schedule, they should be able to tap on the room name and go to the map itself and vice versa. Um, some providers do provide wayfinding of sorts, which could potentially give you turn by turn directions within the venue itself. Um, but I would caution you, you know, with something like that, um, be sure you ask about the reliability of a feature like that, um, because as we all know, the second you get into a venue, like your Wi-Fi and your cell, your cell like nothing works, right? Like you don't have connectivity. So um, just make sure you're asking, you know, how reliable something like that would be um, and if it does indeed require connectivity. So. Long-winded answer because I guess that's how I'm, I'm doing it today. But um, you know, there's a lot of different interactive, and it's really about digging in and asking specific questions um, and asking about the reliability of those features. Okay, I'm I'm afraid we're really um, we're really running out of time. But I want Matt, who just answered uh, asked that previous question, to know that he's the winner of the hundred dollar Amex um, gift card, which is a great coincidence. So congratulations. Um, I do want to um, to thank everyone for being on uh, and also let you know that we have a, another webinar coming up with Brooke um, called Engage Your Attendees, How Social Media and Gamification Increase Adoption. And you'll learn more. It's a deeper dive into gamification to engage your audience and also into um, making every generation part of the conversation and, and social media would be a wonderful follow-up to what we learned today and there is a link that was just sent out in your chat box to register so I just want to thank you again Brooke I, we enjoy working with you and crowd compass and uh, to wish the audience a great um, rest of your afternoon thanks so much for being here <laughs>